they have no business whatsoever destroying the hard-earned years, many years of developing Sudan. The bombing of buildings, hospitals, and infrastructure is unacceptable. Those generals have no business. They have no reason <laughs> destroying a country that has been built painstakingly by the people of this continent, by our brothers and sisters in Sudan, and we will hold them accountable. And we are determined to stop our continent from the slide into military rule. This continent is ready, and we are prepared, as the people of this continent, to build our democratic institutions and to get the people of this continent to choose the government they want. The era of military rule, the era of dictatorships, is behind, is behind us. And we want to send a very clear signal to our brothers in Sudan that this continent will not entertain any military rule in Sudan. We cannot allow a small disagreement to take away the hard-earned gains, the painstaking agreements that have been reached. And that is why today there is a, me a meeting of IGAT. We have been building a coalition of many partners across the globe to stop the slide in Sudan. And Kenya, we will be playing our role because we owe it as a duty of responsibility to our brothers and sisters in Sudan as members of our continent. And that is our position. We welcome our sister nation of Somalia to join the East African community. We are looking forward to Ethiopia, Sudan, with all the challenges, to come on board so that we can build a stronger, bigger, and hopefully much prosperous uh, region. The ability of people to move across borders makes it possible for trade in goods and services, facilitating wealth creation and socioeconomic development. To the extent, therefore, that we are committed to socioeconomic transformation and regional integration, we are equally irreversibly invested in human mobility. It is not possible for us to have a conversation about regional integration. It is difficult for us to have a conversation about Africa continental free trade area and trade without a conversation about human mobility. It takes people, ideas, opportunities to connect countries and to connect regions. We must not give credibility or credence to the artificial boundaries that exist in our region, a product of a conference in Berlin that had nothing to do with us, that partitioned our continent and allocated us boundaries that have since become roadblocks and impediments and barriers to the movement of people, the movement of uh, goods, and it is our responsibility in this century to tear down the barriers, to convert the boundaries into bridges, to change the roadblocks into stepping stones so that goods, services, ideas, people can move and we can benefit from the myriad of good ideas in different parts of our uh, continent. Migration is not a bad thing. But I think the challenge we have is when we talk of involuntary migration or forced migration.
That is what should really concern us even more. Um, and it is an issue that we need to tackle, and this report uh, perhaps will help us uh, develop solutions going forward. Uh, host communities are usually impacted, and the impact can either be positive or it can generate hostilities, and we see aspects of xenophobia and that kind of challenge. We also see migrants making big contributions to their host communities, and we also have challenges of relocating or resettling all the people who migrate, particularly if they are forced. So it is something that we all need to have addressed from a common platform that fosters humanity, human rights, and brings all of us together. What we propose and we are working on as East African community, learning from COVID, is how we can have a common facility that would manufacture vaccination in this region so that going forward we become more prepared. And I know that is in your priority list with your colleagues, Your Excellency. I'm pleased to inform you that uh, the East African Community Partner States, they have no visa requirements, in fact. It's only DRC we are trying to integrate them, and soon they will not be requiring visa to travel to DRC. In fact, moving from Kenya to Uganda or Rwanda, you need a national ID. And we are working towards ensuring that all countries within East Africa, you just need your national ID and you move freely. And therefore, Your Excellency as well, the one-stop border post, and in your many speeches you have also told us, we need a borderless East Africa. And putting the one-stop border post, they have facilitated movement of people, but also goods. And this is something we are working on. We have always enhanced digitalization of operations uh, to facilitate safe access of health for people who are moving across but also we are working on legal framework that would allow an environment for labor mobility in uh, the region. Your Excellency, the deeper understanding of the role of uh, human mobility vis-a-vis -vis regional integration is uh, never more urgent than now. And I think this report that you are launching today, Your Excellency, will be so critical. And I assure you that ourselves as East African community, we are optimistic uh, that practitioners and policy makers will make use of the recommendations coming from the report, Your Excellency, so that we become strong together. Allow me to extend my personal appreciation and comment and commend you for the commitment you have exhibited towards peace and the integration of Africa. Kenya is at the forefront of uh, continental integration and uh, free movement. We are really grateful for that initiative uh, your leadership, uh, Your Excellency. We look forward to your leadership and uh, dismantling the artificial boundaries that hinder the full potential of this whole region and ultimately Africa. Deeper regional integration allows member states to tackle joint challenges, including peace and security, climate change, and the drivers of instability. The African Union's Agenda 2063 envisions an integrated continent, politically united and based on the ideals of an African renaissance. The East African Community and the Intergovernmental Authority on Development reflect this in their respective protocols. Your Excellency President William Samoy Ruto, I am deeply humbled that you have chosen to grace this launch with your presence. This is a true testament to the priority that your administration and the government of Kenya has awarded human mobility and regional integration. I highlight this as the agency of member states is instrumental for advancing these objectives. I therefore welcome champions like Kenya and other governments in the region who are taking critical steps, experiences, towards an ever closer integration. We would like to highlight that in addition to poverty and employment, conflict and climate change, the current war in the Republic of Sudan is having a significant impact on migration, forced displacement in our region. 
The latest numbers and statistics indicate that thousands of our brothers and sisters are fleeing the violence significantly adding to the displacement burden in Igad and neighboring region. Please, Excellency, uh, join me at this juncture to urge for peace in Sudan and call upon the warring parties to commit to full cessation of hostilities and you know, establish a permanent ceasefire to allow the peaceful resolution in this uh, conflict through dialogue. We do appreciate as IGAD so far your commitment and the leadership that the Kenya government has demonstrated. Thank, thank you, uh, my brother, my Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, my sister, Her Excellency, from the Kenya government, other ministers represented here. I would like to take this opportunity, Your Excellency, to introduce and recognize. Your Excellency, I also take this opportunity to recognize our distinguished guests in the Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Excellencies, we also have ambassadors, representatives of the United Nations and the African Union. All protocols observed. Launch today focuses on the mobility dimensions of regional integration. One of the most challenges move households out of poverty and increase the shared prosperity of countries and their citizens. That your administration and the government of Kenya has awarded human mobility and regional benefits of intra African trade, labor mobility, and the economic integration. The report has rated the Kampala Declaration on the same topic. The centrality of access to health. Historic event with you due to urgent engagement as a result of the conflict grants. The report we are launching today, Excellency, provides updated and consolidated Southern Africa, but also to the Northwest, to Europe, to commit to full cessation of hostilities and you know, establish a permanent ceasefire in our countries, but also at the region, the region at large. Similarly, Excellency, in 2020, provide comprehensive policy guidelines to our government, social partners, and other relevant stakeholders. Governments, but also to the regional economic blocks to ensure that our systems work together. Combinated, Your Excellency, and wish to thank Your Excellency and the government of the Republic of Kenya for the world. I think that is the way forward. Looking at the global dynamics, America is about numbers. China is about numbers. Russia, Europe. Uh, Your Excellency, Doctor, it's a great honor and privilege to participate in the launch of. To also to thank the government of you, uh, government of Soma, uh, of Kenya, and. Uh, more crucially, inevitably than ever before. We have also taken a